in Samaria's thick, nearly impenetrable northern jungle, a volcano sends hot ash thousands of feet in the air. Like a demented devil from hell, it spits and hurls molten wrath upon the world. Rivers of fast-moving lava pour from gaping wounds in the crater wall, burning away the luscious jungle below. The tinderbox, seven days into the hunt. Four black silhouettes top a ridgeline, outlined in violet, red, and orange smoke. Snapping embers from the erupting volcano rain down upon them. A blast shakes the world, but not a volcanic blast. No, instead, the roar from a beast, a spark. A giant hundred ton lava elemental, a mixture of minerals and magma, rises up out of the fast flowing superheated soup. Its incendiary foot slams hard on solid ground as it exits the volcano core. Kindling lava rats of unusual size scurry eagerly around the beast, snapping and hissing. The four figures backs against a mountain are trapped by swift flowing rivers of lava to the left and to the right, the only exit through the volcanic hellish beasts. Agi, a youthful Targonian male and a Chan-style martial artist, is choking smoke while energetic fire embers pepper his determined grimace. Adianas Atasans! The Chan leaps. A week earlier, engravers dig, specifically in the Marn Max Keep, the most exclusive residence for VIPs visiting the resort. Augie smiles, waves, motioning others to follow. She's a Chan, my superior. Ariadne, the folk demigoddess, here, engravers dig. Rainbow Undercloud, a female halfling dressed in a hot riot of vivid colors, nervously checks her weapons. I hear she's trouble. Bedia, a female Ardean and a magician by the looks of her thaumaturge laced garb, is equally skeptical. No, that's just a persona. She wouldn't hurt a fly. Inside the suite is one of the most powerful visitors ever to grace this wilderness shithole, Ariadne, an Etharch elf demigoddess of martial arts. Splat! Ariadne drives her fist into a vicious looking spider thing about the size of a wolverine with an attitude to match. Great green gobs of greasy, grimy spider guts gush. What kind of varmint infested hole did you put me into? Greatly annoyed, Ariadne, dressed in Chan practice gear, wipes spider goo from her fist. It is Graver's dig. Somaria, ass end of the world. What else did you expect? Omba, a Targonian female and pirate captain, stands casually near a side door. A quick out if the goddess anger flares too hotly. Not a spider's nest. De tunnel terrors, a kind of delicacy in Graver's dig. What about Sheol? It is much worse since Brigthwina sacked it. Uh, screw Zoon. Next time I'm just gonna tell him he could fix his own problems. Would you prefer to stay on my ship? <sighs> this place needs a makeover. Ariadne snaps her fingers, and the once ordinary fortress chamber shifts into an illusionary, beautiful elven suite. <laughs> That's better. Another tunnel terror sticks its head out of a crack in the wall. Ariadne primal blasts it to smithereens, leaving behind a collage of her signature forget-me-nots. Excuse me, Ariadne. Are we interrupting you? Not at all. Just finishing up with the last person who interrupted me. What do you want? I brought the new hunting party you requested. This is Rainbow. Rainbow Undercloud. She's a very capable magician and acrobatic. Hello? No. Not much magic with this one. Well, perhaps just a touch? She's a member of the Flying Circus. A touch, perhaps. What else you got? This is Helios. Helios, a male half-minotaur, his physique adorned with old Imperial Legionnaire armor, salutes with a large axe. A cow? Recruiting from the stockyards now? <laughs> He's half-minotaur. Isn't that a bit redundant? I mean... That's okay. Best you not think too hard on that. 
Let's see that axe, friend. Helios' fear subsides at the mention of his axe, and he hands it proudly to the goddess. Ariadne studies it intensely, eyes distant. It's been passed down four generations, gifted to your great-great-grandfather from a minor deity. You are wise. How did you know that? Goddess, duh. And who might you be? Undoubtedly. You've heard of the legendary Bedia. Legendary, huh? Is that a title or a given name? Bedia slay great beast. A great many great beast. Some of which I'm sure you have never heard of. Oh? Don't be modest. Tell her your story. Bedia searches the room for an out. First, the door, guarded by Umba, then the tunnel terror hole. Maybe the window? What are you doing? Surely she doesn't need to hear any of my lame stories. Really, let's not waste the god's time. Oh, I'm sure Ariadne has time for a legend. Yes, please. Tell me a story. R really? Absolutely. Well, I suppose there was this one time on Cloudforger Mountain. Oh, Cloudforger. Tavia, the Nordic Winterlands. Please proceed. A grotesque beast plagued the people of Tavia. Long fur covered its body from head to toe. Huge teeth, even bigger claws. We came upon it on the darkest night, not in a Numian in the sky. It was a raid, you see, 40 gravers and all. No one had seen anything like it. We brought fighters, archers, and spell support. Blood, violence, and swords. You can picture that, right? Oh, sure. I was there in a support capacity, a, a healing role. But soon I was out of spells. Half our party was dead or dying in the blood snow. snow. I've heard this story. You have? Yeah, it's the beast. The raccoon, right? Well... It was a very big raccoon, ancient, antediluvian, maybe even primordial. Okay, okay, shut, shut up, up you'll, you'll do. do. Rest, Rest of you, gather, gather around. Bedia exhales heavily, relieved to have the story and Ariadne's attention over. The four gravers gather around Ariadne. The hunt starts in the morning. So soon? Once a decade, the tinderbox erupts, violently spewing out fire elementals. Brigthwena is offering triple points in anything fire-related. Fire? Related. fire? I hate fire. A bog of incendiary conflagration. You want us to go there? Into the lava fields! No! I hate lava! It is just fire that is in river! I have already taken the liberty of signing you up. You will be hunting as Ariadne's artisans. Don't embarrass her. Too late. Ariadne's artisans. Well, I suppose all that remains... Into the fire! More! I hate fire! Back to now, the tinderbox lava fields. Helios' fearful moan echoes through the heat and smoke. Augie lands. Bam! The gung-ho champ delivers a kung fu chop sake flurry of blows at the closest fire rodent, striking it hard. Augie's fist and feet come back bloody and burnt from the kindling's hot, razor-sharp lava exoskeleton. Ouch! Ouch! Hot! That hurts! No shit! Try using your bow stick! Bedia heals his wounds with a quick spell. Oh, it feels so much better. Back to the fight, soldier. Across the field, Helio stands rigid, petrified by the approaching elemental spark, stomping menacingly toward him. Rainbow runs close. Helios! Helios! The elemental stomps closer, looming bigger and bigger. Helios! You can do it! Rainbow points a finger and casts Frostbite at the spark. No! Fire is dumb! Do or die! Ah! He bellows a Minotaur war cry, stomps a hoof and charges. Minotaur and Elemental collide. Elsewhere, Augie hits a kindling repeatedly with his bow stick, killing it. The beast explodes, spraying fire and molten debris at Augie, singeing his hair and skin. 
Oh! They're vengeful little bastards when you kill them. Augie looks up through bleary eyes and sees two more kindlings racing toward Helios and Rainbow. He leaps, tan, quick, intercepting the rodents, driving the first into the ground, stunning it. <sighs> you fight like pretty ballerina. <sighs> Kill that thing already, will you? I'm working on it! <sighs> ah! Helios hammer strikes the elemental, causing it to roar, spinning lava at him, and then it disappears. Where? Subterranean, of course, rocking the world as it went. Watch out below! Ha ha! Fool! Behind Helios, Rainbow throws her chakram at the rodent, chipping away its armored exoskeleton. Suddenly, the ground quakes, rocking violently. It's coming back! The spark breaches, lobbing lava at Augie, dropping him. Augie is down! Badia chain casts heels at Augie and Rainbow. I'm glad you joined their team. With health restored, Augie performs a kip up and is immediately back into the action, beating the closest rat. Try and stay up, people. I can be better help if I'm not stuck healing. Well, excuse me. Augie spins his bow stick and stuns a rodent. Ooh, someone finished that team. Helios does as instructed, cleaving the kindling, causing it to explode in his face. Uh, 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 I hate fire! Undeterred by burning cow hair and hide, he turns his attention to the one remaining rat, but Rainbow flings her chakram, killing it first. Oh, me too. Boom, the rat explodes, spraying Helios with fire. I hate fire. <sighs> it's aversion therapy, Helios. I am aversion to you. Across the way, the spark belches, spraying the field with intense meteor fire. They're coming! Augie, Helios, and Rainbow jump for cover and just avoid being pelted with superheated rock and energetic particles. Rainbow takes a hot stone to the buttocks. This is the kind of pain I don't like. What kind of pain do you enjoy? I'll never tell. Across the field, Adia conjures a cold orb and drops it on the spark. Cold and heat fight, a contest of wills, threatening to rip the tinderbox from reality. Got him! You see that? I got him! I got that spell! Watch! Rainbow also conjures a cold orb and drops it, but sadly, the giant snowball flies harmlessly past the spark. Oh, mm. bummer. Through the mist and the smoke and the steam, Augie is a whirling dervish, bludgeoning in the elemental. Meanwhile, Helios surveys the field. <sighs> this is so scary. There's fire over here and giant snowballs over there. And Aggie is spinning around like crazy. I can't even get my head around it. With the elemental, the only remaining baddie, Helios charges, screaming uh, war challenge. Ice ball on out three, please. Got it. Another Bedia giant snowball comes down like a meteor strike. Yes, yes, yes. Bloody brilliant. Augie and Helios partner up, going toe to toe against the spark, axe, and bow stick in sync. I crit. You crit. Uh, we are crits. Uh, yes. But I crit the mostest. Ah, uh, uh, mother of fate. We stood up to fire and fear. Finally, the Minotaur takes a monumental overhand swing, sinking the axe in the spark's chest. Surely we're the chosen ones. The soul of the elemental superheats the axe. <laughs> Nearby, Rainbow senses the elemental is almost beaten. She motions, frantically waving to the spellcaster. Bedia! Ice orb, it's butt! Bedia drops a final chromatic ice orb on the elemental, crushing its life. The elemental falls like a stone and explodes. Stone shrapnel shredding our heroes. On Helios, defiant in the face of the explosion, stands over the spark, drawing its elemental soul into his axe. <sighs> Blessed mother of fate! Ah! He yanks it violently free, and for a beat, fire is beautiful. In the distance, Bedia raises her hands triumphantly. Woo! The crowd goes wild. Is this the good kind of pain? Oh. Aggie's down! Again? 
Okay. I tried to cast a spell, but it it didn't work. I need to watch your hands and see how you deliver it. You just do this. Bedia demonstrates how to frame the fingers as she casts a healing spell that once more restores Agi to health. Without thinking, muscle memory performs a kip up, getting Agi ready for action. But there is no action to be had. We won? I hit fire. Let's go home. Graver's Dig, a few days later. Ariadne's artisans trudge through the main gate into Graver's Dig, covered in ash and half burnt, just as Gary bellows out the five o'clock hour. Uncanny how that spider always knows the time. Every hour on the hour. He's a dumb nuisance. Always bellowing like that. I'm going to kill Gary. Oh, that's mean. I like Gary. Well, at least we always know when it's happy hour. Evening, the Pyramid Bar. The ever-popular Ma'at Bar is doing a brisk business, the cavernous stone chamber filled with hard partying revelers. Rainbow staggers rode weary through the main door, dragging the kindling trophy heads behind her, followed by Helios, Agi, and Bedia. The Pyramid Alewife, a female Targonian, owner, operator, and master of all things ale, spots the decapitated gnarly rat heads. Nuh-uh, not those. Not in here. Hello, Brenda. It's nice to see you too. Uh, might we have a room, please? Out. Aggie, you know the rules. No hunting trophies in the bar. Cut the kakukati. We're tired. Yeah, the volcano was mucho madness. He's not lying. Do you know how many times I've died this week? Three, four, five. I lost count. It's exhausting keeping him alive, you know. I don't care. Come on, Sera, Tera, Fera. Help us out with the room. What did you say your name was anyway? I didn't. I've been coming to this here bar since Brick Twana ran the set sites out of town. No one know her name. Ain't that right, Clarice? Now give us room. Pretty please. Your bar tab is frozen. What? That can't be right. Your Chanklan chums have been drinking heavily on your good graces. What the hell, darling? Who gave them permission to do that? You did. Last time you were here? 500 thoughts. Now pay up or get out. 500? I don't have that. Come on, darling. You know I'm good for it. That sparkle in your eye doesn't pay the bills. Sometimes it does. Get out! Perhaps we could put on a performance as payment. I think you'll find we're rather good. A wounded melody torments the bar from a small stage in the corner. A couple of old country codgers beat out a discordant rhythm on a banjo and a hooch bottle. Rainbow plows the stage. Excuse me. Thank you. It is our turn. Helios follows with axe in hand. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. The men flee. Attention, please. For one night only, we are thrilled to bring you Ariadne's artisans. Musicians. See? <laughs> are you actually intending to play? Sorry, Melody! We know you're going to love our performance, and when you do, please leave a tip in the hat. Tips? Mucho tips! Where, where, where's Ariadne? Oh, shut your mouth, you look like a troglodyte. Without further ado... Ariadne's artisans jump full swing into the jam session. Rainbow on the theremin, backed by Helios on the recorder, Augie on the mouth harp, and Bedia on the oud. The alewife watches from the back of the bar. Even covered in ash and their clothing scorched black, they aren't half bad. Eh, but they aren't half good either. The bar isn't throwing cabbage or insults, so she heads back to serving drinks.
Later that evening, when the last of the adoring fans dwindle and the alewife had taken away the proceeds as payment, our heroes relax with a round of drinks. Rainbow tosses the three rat heads onto the table. We should hand these things in. They're getting ripe. Ha ha! My advice to all of you is to make singing your second career choice. Bia, please. Umba, did you come to join the hunt? Oh, we could use a cleric. Huh? No, 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 no. I am sorry. No. <laughs> Ariadne has a new job for you. A proposition, really. What kind of job, prop? Come on, Umba. We just got back. Having survived the test of the Tinder box, Ariadne is going to send you on a proper quest. The pyramid bar goes eerily silent. Patrons lean close, hoping to pick up news of the next big quest rush. When questers talk, people listen. Butt out. You are are going on a journey. Hmm, what kind of journey? Like a hero's journey? I'm already on one of those. I like to travel. Is it paid travel? Are you going to pay us? If it involves my ship, I will be happy for you. But otherwise, no. Is your friend all right? Helios has a few phobias. Lava, fire, cold, and now apparently also water. So you would not be interested? I'm interested. Tell us more. Ariadne wants you to see a mutual friend of ours. They will give you the details. A mutual friend, eh? Gods are fond of mystery. I am not. She is not far. Her name is Ninsuno. Oh, Ninsuno? I love Ninsuno. She's a seer. She specializes in Anumian astrology. She has prepared something special. And what's that? I cannot say. Can't say or won't say? My instructions are clear. I take the four of you to Ninsunu. After that, I am ambivalent. I'm in! Yes! Maybe we should talk about it first. Me and my friends need to confer. Confer away? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. You know this Ninsunu, Agi. What's her deal? Her deal? She deals cards. Fate cards. Anumian astrology. You think Ariadne wants us to draw fate cards? Gods. My dad drew a fate card once. Oh, really? What's happened? He's dead. Shit! Don't look at me. I am just the overpriced messenger. I have questions, but I am willing to see what this seer is dealing. We can trust Ninsunu. We survived the tender box. How much worse could this be? Worse. For better or for worse. Very late that night, the shopping district is dead. Lights out. A pack of dingoes scavenge for scraps. Ariadne's artisans stroll past a series of tents, battened down for the night. A large mastiff tied up outside a circus tent growls, but can't be further bothered. Two tents over, Omba leads them to a colorful Ardean Bedouin tent. Ninsunu awaits. It looks like this Ninsunu buys their clothes from the same place that you do. Every color goes with every other color, I always say. Helios extends his axe, creating a crack in the tent flap, peering in uneasily. Oh, this feels trapsy. Bedea and Rainbow look up at the Anumian, Schemer. Is that Schemer? Looking at us? Oh, I think so. Hello? The Anumian hovers directly over Graver's dig and Ninsunu's tent. Anyone have bad feeling? It's just your imagination. I don't like Anumian. They don't like me. Suddenly, the constellation is gone behind thick, shifting clouds. 
You can't be afraid to reach for the stars, Helios. Agi pulls back the tent flap and enters.